team, we cover uh, many of the countries of, of East Africa and up to the Horn with Somalia. Uh, can I first acknowledge also uh, the High Commissioner of Uganda uh, to Australia, um, who's here with us uh, this afternoon, and obviously uh, here to share much more about Uganda than I can possibly do after being in the in the role for nearly a couple of years. But um, uh, thank you very much for joining us too. Uh, so. A few things I also wanted to just uh, emphasise this afternoon, uh, and as I've said in an article in the latest edition of our business envoy, uh, East Africa is more than just uh, wildlife and tourism, as wonderful and wonderful as that is. Uh, and you know, I guess uh, when Australian many Australians think about East Africa, and I'm not, I'm talk, not, I'm talking to a more converted uh, audience than that already, but. Uh, obviously, people think of safaris, um, the Lion King, uh, and those sort of images. Um, there are parts of East Africa that are home to some of the greatest innovations uh, that the world has seen. And uh, M-Pesa, as Kim has mentioned, is one of those, the mobile, uh, mobile money platform that uh, was started in Kenya many years ago. So I want to just emphasise that uh, what has struck me in, in the time I've been in, in the East African region is uh, the, the innovation that has happened there uh, and things that have been created there that uh, have been world leading. Uh, and besides uh, a mobile money platform like M-Pesa, I also, some, uh, something I've yet to, yet to see uh, myself, but uh, it's on my list of things to do when I next go to Rwanda, uh, is uh, there's a US company uh, there called Zipline that is using drone technology to deliver um, blood uh, supplies uh, across Rwanda, obviously a relatively small uh, country, landlocked, uh, but using using that technology uh, to really deliver a, a, obviously a vital uh, vital health need is just another example of the the amazing uh, work that's going on in in the region. You've seen some statistics already today about uh, the average sort of rates of economic growth. Uh, I feel we're all going to be doing a plug for our regions in Africa, uh, but uh, East African countries are averaging 5 to 7% uh, gr annual growth at the moment. So I think that, again, uh, to, combined with the, uh, the demographics, uh, really tells the story that these, these countries are onwards and upwards. Regional integration as well. Some of you will know, of course, um, about the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. Uh, a country like Kenya and, and, and Kenya and Uganda, I have to point out, um, have also been leaders in the African continent over, around uh, cross-border trade and promoting free trade. Uh, and the, the presidents of both Kenya and Uganda have done a lot together in, in the last uh, couple of years, certainly, and I know before that, uh, to, really, to really push free and open trade across the borders. And I think that's really uh, vital to, to the landlocked countries in Eastern Africa that they, they know they can have this uh, free movement of goods and services and get to ports, of course, in, in Kenya and Tanzania in particular. And I just wanted to, to mention a few, uh, a few perceptions and realities uh, for East Africa. And I've mentioned sort of the view that uh, I suppose many of us have held about countries of East Africa and the tourism side, but uh, I do want to touch on a few things and that's uh, addressing some perceptions around security in Eastern Africa. And as I said yesterday in the ADU plenary session here with, in a Meet the Homs session, um, often that makes the headline news. And uh, uh, you only have to talk to the Australian companies that are operating in Eastern Africa to know that with the right precautions, with the right security measures, um, they're able to operate uh, very well. Uh, and you see that in the case of Base Titanium, of course, this is Base Resources, West Perth Company, uh, the biggest mine in Kenya, uh, and, uh, and other companies that are doing uh, very, very well in Eastern Africa. Um, so, uh, of course, we all need to take security seriously, but, uh, but it's, not, uh, it, it's certainly not a hindrance to companies uh, doing business. Uh, if they take the right uh, security measures and precautions. Uh, corruption, I need to mention it. Sometimes the elephant in the room, often uh, uh, potential investors will look at, uh, look at some, uh, some countries around the world and say, well, I it's, I'll just hear a bit about corruption, etc." Can I just emphasize that uh, I've been very impressed by the, uh, the efforts by um, governments in, in the region uh, that I work in. Uh, to address corruption, uh, the corruption uh, 
uh, issue, which of course is, is entrenched, but uh, there's, real, there's real steps uh, towards uh, making it, uh, these countries much uh, a clean country and, and therefore ripe for, for further um, private sector investment as well as obviously being great for, for uh, to deliver services to the people. So uh, we're seeing some really good measures being taken on, on that uh, anti-corruption agenda. Uh, others are already there. Yes, that's true. Um, of course, you know, for a country like Kenya, there are many UK uh, companies operating in a whole range of sectors. Obviously, there's a history there. So we're, and some of those companies obviously have been there for a long time. There are Dutch companies. There are lots. There are obviously last year uh, a range of US uh, new US investors uh, committed to to new um, programs and projects and activities in in. Kenya uh, in particular, um, but there's plenty of room uh, for Australian companies and uh, I do make that, uh, emphasise that. Uh, and the chair of the British Chamber of Commerce in Kenya uh, has said to me that uh, he's more than, than happy for members of the Chamber of Commerce, the British Chamber of Commerce, to reach out to Australian companies, um, either those who are already there or of course those who come in and seek to uh, to get to know a bit more about Kenya and the other countries in East Africa. That's just a great source of knowledge as well, and I really encourage uh, companies to take up that offer if you're interested in uh, in talking to, to other uh, investors that are already, already there. Um, obviously, there's, there's been some challenges around some of the regulatory environments in East Africa, uh, but, but companies, if you've got the staying power uh, and are willing to you know, to be patient and work with the governments and make sure, obviously, that you're engaging at uh, the various levels of the political system and with communities, then um, you'll find uh, that that pays dividends in the end. There is lots of uh, planning. Uh, some may perceive uh, countries in East Africa not necessarily maybe have, have strong planning agendas. They do. Uh, I'll mention, for instance, the Kenyan Big Four development agenda uh, and that is really seeking to increase manufacturing, affordable housing, food security, and universal health care. Uh, and increasingly, the countries of East Africa are wanting quality, and Australian companies bring quality. Um, and we're seeing a growing middle class in these countries, um, so the demand for premium products and quality uh, is only going to get stronger and stronger and Brand Australia is, is terrific delivering on that. Uh, there, I think there's obviously lots of, uh, lots of opportunities. Um, we have a big trade relationship with Kenya in cut flowers. Uh, Australia is one of, the, one of their prime destinations for cut flowers. So those of you who buy flowers for Mother's Day or Valentine's Day, if you're buying roses, then chances are they're probably Kenyan roses. Uh, so that's great and we hope to, to see, uh, see that continue. Uh, but you've already heard today, METS, I know, I know the Ugandan government is very keen on Australian companies to provide uh, medical, um, sorry, mining equipment, technology and services. You've heard about the medical side as well. Um, obviously, value addition, tea, coffee, companies can really um, make uh, strong inroads there. So, and there is a relatively new uh, Australia-Kenya Chamber of Commerce as well. Uh, it has its uh, base here in Perth and, and they've recently established in Kenya.